tuned into Breaking the Mask of Depression with your host, Diva with Depression. Welcome to Behind the Mask with Diva with Depression. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you follow me or if you know me, you know that I always talk about my heartbeats, my babies, my daughters. And everyone is always asking me about how you parent a child with a mental illness. So since it is Suicide Awareness Prevention Month, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, excuse me, and tomorrow is World Suicide Prevention Day, my oldest heartbeat and baby has decided to join me so we can let you in on a little bit of our lives. My baby welcoming my baby, Tony C. Hi, Tony. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. It's just like we're talking all the time. And um, I, I'm going to let everybody know that I've already given you the pep talk that, you know, we're honest here and I, I didn't prep you or anything. So we're just going to get into it and start talking. Okay. So the first question that I have for you is, at what age did you recognize that something might be wrong? Okay, so it actually took me a while to get this one because <clears throat> I, I always say that um, as far back as I can remember, I always had issues kind of with emotional regulation. Um, I've always been sensitive, things like that. I think... Um, I can high school, so around or maybe end of eighth grade, fourteen. So yeah, um, thirteen or fourteen, I think, is when I really started to notice that I was just sad um, and lonely. But again, I think I've always had trouble kind of with my emotional regulation. So, but yeah, I guess thirteen. I think I I kind of noticed high school. So you know, I've always told people that around eleventh grade. I I think eleventh grade, but you know. So I guess in between those, that time frame is a good answer. Um, what symptoms did you notice that make you made you think that something might be wrong or made you feel different? I was just really sad. Um, I just felt lonely. I mean, I had a few friends, but I did. I did. Feel, I felt lonely. Um, and then once eleventh grade hit, I think that's just when it got the darkest, and I think that's when it was the most noticeable. Um, so that time I just stopped caring about how I looked late for school, grades plummeted. Um, I stopped talking to a lot of friends. Remember I was eating lunch in the bathroom. So that, it just, I think that was the, those were the biggest times. Do you think that your friends or family noticed that there was a change? Did anybody approach you or say anything to you about it? My friends know. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that we're, we're all we're all teenagers. There's no nobody understands what's going on, so I don't fault them for that. Um, I mean, I guess I guess you noticed. Um, I think Lauren was too young to notice. I don't think Dad noticed, but um, I, th I guess you noticed know, because I think in this time, I might have just started going to my first therapist around this time. So I guess there must've been some kind of like inclination that something was going on. I don't think anybody really knew how bad it was. I don't think I knew how bad it was, so. Okay. So you didn't share how you were feeling with your friends, your family, teachers, counselors, anything like that? I really don't think so. Not, not on that, definitely not before therapy. I really don't think that I went into detail. Um, and I think that's just because, I, again, I didn't know how bad it was. I think I thought all my problems were related to like not having as many friends or being over like I just I don't think I knew I don't think I really knew what was going on so unfortunately I don't think I told many people did you feel like you were ashamed to share it or it was just you know you were scared to share it you didn't know how people would react I think it was about I don't know I guess scared um I mean obviously ashamed yeah I think just not knowing how to explain it not feeling like I had a reason to be upset um I think at a 
certain point you know and you know within our household yeah there were just a lot of things going on and I don't think that, that was the time to really say anything or yeah so I, I guess maybe scared or shame bad timing not knowing how to express my feelings because I think even my first therapist I barely talked to him yeah he, he would always say that <laughs> you know he wouldn't talk um but, yeah. And you know, I think that's key for, for us to, you know, highlight the fact that you said that you didn't know how to express it, um, number one. And number two, you didn't think that you felt like you had a reason to feel that way. Right. Um, and, and I think that all of us go through that, you know, and, and I, you know, the three of us are always talking about it. And we always say, well, we have this, we have that, you know, is it ungrateful to feel this way? So um, thank you for saying that. That's a good way to to, to say that you just didn't think you had a reason to um I also think it's important though I'm sorry to interrupt but I while we're talking about that looking back on it I think okay so I think now there's just more so much more information about you know mental health but looking back a lot of the adults I think in my life and stuff were so she's bratty she's spoiled the big thing she's dramatic um lazy so I I think that those kind of you start to think that you start to think that there's nothing you're just being dramatic you just and I think I'm just kind of getting to the point where I'm you know trying to like get rid of those adjectives but I think that I mean I think that the adults need to just watch what they're what they're saying that stuff that stuff carries yeah um, and, and it's interesting, and, and we talk about this all the time, that um, my mother did the same, did that to me, you know, whenever I would express my feelings, or if I was crying, you know, her way of shaming me was like, oh, don't be so damn dramatic, yeah. you know, or give me a break, and I probably did it with you, you know, not thinking, number one, that it, it's something that would hurt, or number two, that it would, you know, um, it would, it would turn into something that would stop you from being you. You know, when I said, when I, if I would say, you know, oh, Tony's being dramatic today, it just means that, you know, you do express yourself more or you, you know, you do, um, you know, it's not dramatic. It's just you. You're just extra. You're just extra special. You're, you, you, you talked more than Lauren did. And um, so, you know, I, I have to, I have to apologize. Like I always do about saying that, but I just wanted people to understand that that's how I was raised with that term. And then I, I turned around and I did that to you and you see how it, it turns out. Right. You know, right. Um, yeah. So when, when was your first attempt at, well, let's, let's start with this. When do you think that you started having suicidal thoughts? Mm, maybe because we didn't know what we didn't really know what that was I'm gonna say 13 and um you know without putting anybody's business out there I did have a friend who also struggled and it was something she brought up to me her like a way that she would deal with it um and I think so yeah I think around 13 is when maybe I was exposed to not exposed to I don't know what to say because it crossed my mind right um because I don't I don't I didn't we didn't really know about it I mean I have access to any of this stuff but yeah I think around 13 is maybe when I had my first few thoughts about it um I think it got serious I think yeah like 11th grade so what is that like 15 16 I think that's when it got pretty pretty heavy okay and and what when was your first attempt? That I can remember six, 16, probably. I don't know. Okay, so the issue is a lot of this stuff I kind of black, you know, tried to forget. Um, I'm, I'm going to, the one from the first point that I can remember, I'm going to say around 15 or 16. We were living in the, um, in the second house on Red Leaf. So, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so around that time. Okay. And, you know, if, if you want to share, you don't have to, but um, did you have multiple attempts? 
I, I did. So by the time I went in, I went to the hospital when I was, uh, seven, I just turned 18. So by that time, it was, yeah, it was around five. Okay. Five or six attempts. Wow. And how did you keep that from us? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't, cause I don't think I told, I don't think you knew anything until I started going to, to therapy. Remember the therapist called you in, but um, I don't know. But no, that's something that nobody knew. I don't, I don't think. And um, well, number one, um, I'm glad that you did go to therapy. Um, that was a tough, it was tough getting you there. Um, but you know, it's good that you did go. What methods, if you don't mind, did you choose? So pills. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. <laughs> so I, in my mind, I thought you just um, take anything. I mean, I was taking anything. Okay. And um, I would always throw up after. I think the last attempt before I went to the hospital, I took, I don't, I think I was sometimes the anti some antidepressants that I was on. I think I took mm -hmm. a lot of those. I think maybe some stuff that you had, I might've took just anything. Um, I did throw up that day. Um, but the next day I just felt so, I felt weird. I felt maybe I hadn't gotten it all out. That's, yeah. But yeah oh, we, is that what, did you scare yourself or is that what made you decide to tell us? Yeah, I think that's when I was like, I think I said, I just need to go to the hospital. I knew that I needed yeah. to go to the hospital to scare myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember that day and, you know, I always share with people that I really just thought that, you know, you had eaten something, you know, that made you sick the first time that you started throwing up. And, and I do think that Lauren is the one that came to me the first time to say that you were throwing up. Um, and so, um, Yeah, I, I, I think that um, it was it was pretty scary. And I, I can tell that you were scared when you finally decided to share it with us. Um, what what were your what were you thinking, you know, when it was finally time to number one, tell us and number two, um, go to the hospital? Scared is like an understatement. Yeah. I, I got there. I had to be on um, suicide watch. Um, so never heard of this. They didn't know that this was a thing. You couldn't stay. So I was in there by myself with this lady. It was like a security officer outside the door. Like it, I was scared. I was scared. And then the next day I met with a psychiatrist. Scary. I, I don't think I knew. I, there's no way that I knew it was going to happen. Um, and so I, I was terrified. I was terrified. And I think I know that I regretted at the time saying something. I know that. Espe Do you remember when they put me in the, in the um, what was it, the police van? Yeah, with the sheriff. Yeah. When the sheriff took me out there, first of all, I didn't want to go. Here I am about to get in the front seat. He said, no, no, no. And he put me in the back. I said, okay, no. I said, okay, no. And, um, you know, um, to share the parent side of it quickly, um, when you, uh, the whole experience um, crushed me, you know, and I remember um, when they said that I had to leave and, and the nurse, I just busted out crying in the hallway and the nurse said to me, it's okay, it's okay. And I was like, no, it's not, no, it's not. And um, since you had just turned 18, you were no longer my child. You know, I could never, I couldn't make decisions. And, and so when they came out, um, they didn't tell me right away that they were going to send you to a hospital. Um, I heard the, them whispering at the thing and um, I made a scene. I threatened the sheriff, you know, and I, and, and I told them, I was like, well, you know, nothing better not happen to her be, between here and there. And uh, we followed behind you the whole time. Um, and and I, I remember thinking, you know, from the time that we got to the hospital, but, you know, I had never let you go before. And, and I said, you know, I can't imagine how 
lonely she must feel. Um, my first time being in the hospital, I was, you know, what, in my 30s. Um, and it was scary for me. So I can just imagine what it's like for, you know, a teenager to have to be in that, that space. Yeah, that was, <clears throat> that was scary. I think I cried. I must have cried from the time he shut the, I'm, no, I think I was, I must have cried the entire time. And when we got there, I don't think it, I don't, I think it was before visiting hours. So I had to go in by myself and I'll never forget the nurse that did my intake. She's asking all these questions. She's like, have you been sexually, uh, you know, sexually abused as a kid? Um, like all these trauma questions. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then we get to the end. And at this point I had finally like stopped crying a little bit. And she says, okay, sweetie, there's nothing wrong. You're just a little girl that got lost. I started bawling. I'll never forget that. Um, you never told me that. Well, wow. I don't think she meant it in a bad way. In a bad way. I yeah. think just, but something about it made me, I don't know. I, I, now that I'm saying it, I'm thinking maybe, I mean, I was scared. Um, maybe it made me feel a little hopeful or maybe some, maybe I felt understood in the moment. Um, because I did, I felt bad when she was going through the question and, you know, that's before I really understood what trauma is um, and that trauma is different for everybody. <clears throat> it really is. Um, so I, I felt bad, like, again, yeah. why am I here? I don't, you know, I don't, yeah. But y'all yeah, never forget that, I was very scary. When I got in the room with the room, they took all my stuff. And I said, this is ridiculous. And I, cry I cried. I think they had to give me something to go to sleep. I, had yeah. to get yeah, I couldn't sleep, so. It is, it's a scary experience. Um, I, I try to share that with people all the time that, um, you know, going to the mental health facility is scary. Um, it is a lonely feeling um, and, and you go through everything, shame, um, why am I here? You know, um, you know, it's a lot. Did you, I, I know that a lot of people, um, and I'm not even gonna, I can't even put it in an age group. I know a lot of people that live with mental illness they lie or don't share everything when they're inpatient. Do you think that you were truthful with the, 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 the doctors and yourself while you were there? Oh, no, I just wanted to get out. Okay. Um, what I think the, maybe the next day you have to have like a, what's like a group meeting yeah. or something. Um, and once I think, once I knew that it was dependent on me, so I had to go to group and I had to take my medications. I, I knew that I wanted to, to, I did what I had to do to get out. So, yeah, no, I don't think I was truthful. How did, um, after you, after this experience, how do you think that it affected your relationship with your friends and your family? Did your, your relationships change? I know, you know, after I got sick, I lost a lot of friends. You know, um, did, did people treat you differently? Mm. Because I don't remember, you know, I, I know that we didn't share it with a lot of people. Um, I think maybe just your aunt um, and of course your uncles, but I don't think that it, it was, you know, we shared it with many people. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as far as family, I think you know the people that didn't know they were supportive. Around that time, I think I started isolating a lot, so um, I don't think I was as honest with the three friends that I. Had. I don't think I was that honest. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think you and I became closer. I think it was a little, it was different. Um, I think in some ways I thought that you guys didn't care that much or um, it was nice to see that, you know, maybe you guys cared more than I thought you did or, yeah, I guess. That's interesting because, um... 
I don't know. You, I th think that as a parent, you always, you know, one thing that I always say is, oh, me and my girls are very, very close, but it, do it doesn't matter how, and I think I'm saying this for parents, you know, no matter how close you are to your children, there's always room for you not to know everything. You know, like, um, I would have never thought that you felt that way, um, that you couldn't share with me, um, or that you felt that, you know, there were limits to my affection and, and love. And um, I won't speak about for your dad, um, you know, because the relationship was totally different. Um, but, you know, um, I'm glad you shared that because that um, tells parents, number one, that you always have to be aware, you know, and you always have to make sure that your children are, are talking to you or just let them know that, that you're there for them. You know? I don't have to do much. I don't think you have to do much. I think to be fair, to be fair, um, I think you guys were going through your own things. Um, so I, I, I think that it's difficult, it, specifically with like my mental health issues. I think with you and I, I think you were really just starting to get a grasp on, you know, your own diagnosis and kind of getting back on your feet. I, I don't think that, I mean, no offense. No, I want I, you to be honest. <laughs> I don't think that, um, I don't think that you guys were in the position to be able to understand the kind of support that I needed at the time. And this is just looking back. And I think I looked at that as maybe not caring or, uh, you know, the arguments we would have, you know, like if we would argue, I, I think, I don't think that you guys were just in a spot to really understand, or maybe you understood, but to be able to provide the support that I needed at the time. So, I know. And I guess this will be a bonus question. And um, do you think that me having my breakdown and going through the mental health journey situation because you know you guys are seven years apart yeah. so there's more that you remember than your sister will remember right. but do you think that the experience that I was going through or watching me go through do you think that that had any effect on your situation or how you ha handled the situation or you know how did that fit in I mean, I, I think when that whole thing happened, I think I had to, I felt like I had to grow up a little, you know, I had yeah. I felt like I had to grow up a little uh, quicker. Yeah. Um, I you just feeling like I need to take care of things. So they, I couldn't do that. There was no room for, I don't want to, cause I'm not trying to, make it seem like it was an awful no and and I think that you need to you, you need to be honest um no matter um what you know I, I always tell you your feelings are valid your feelings are your feelings so don't be afraid to tell me how you act, honestly feel um and that goes for anybody I always say that you know your your feelings are valid because they're your feelings um it's your experience so if that's your experience then I'll just say, I think around that time is when I may have started practicing putting myself like on the back burner. Okay. <clears throat> um, of course, you don't know what that is at the time, but right. putting everyone else's needs um, before your own and that with family, that's with friends, that's just with anything. So maybe that, maybe that affected me that way. Mm -hmm. um it was just a really lonely time it was a lonely time I just felt like I had I had to take care of things that I was last kind of yeah yeah I get that I get that but I, I don't want to make it seem like I had like you know I don't want to y'all aren't y'all weren't bad you know we didn't have a it doesn't matter though you know and and I think that that's what you know talking to parents and and on this journey that I've been on, you know, the last couple of years is that parents equate their children's um, experiences with them being a bad parent. 
and that has nothing to do with it because you know we could have been you know the absolute best parents if that you know if that there's a thing um but something outside of the house could have affected your trauma you know which had no effect on us we didn't do it right. so um you, though that's not a disclaimer that you have to use you you have to always go with your experience and your feelings I agree um, it's yeah. hard it's hard I can't I can't imagine being a parent and watching your your, there's no way that you can't put some blame on yourself or take it personalized if you did something wrong so I can understand I think that um you know yeah well everybody knows that this is my first interview but I think that um I would love to do an interview with your sister individually and then an interview with the three of us and then we can talk more about how it would affect you know how it affects both both parties you know because it's 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 hard on both you know um so we'll have to think about that. I think it's a good idea. I think, you know, we're close, but I'm sure there's some things that we probably haven't said to each oh, other. Or, you know, I, I'm sure you just probably think we don't know. So yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Okay, so where are you at now in your mental health journey? Okay, so I was talking to my boyfriend about this earlier. My boyfriend named Justin. So I was saying that I feel like at that, I was doing it like on a scale of one to 10. So I feel like at that time, the darkest time, I'm in the negatives, okay? And I think now I can say that I'm a solid seven, 7.5 on a good day. Okay. I think it's a work in progress. Okay. What, um, if you don't mind, what diagnosis have you received? Just in general or right now? Yeah. Um, depression, uh, bipolar disorder, um, the most, I think situational depression or, so my most recent, um, diagnosis is, um, ADHD, uh, combined type and mm -hmm. then, um, major recurrent depressive disorder. Um, so those are my two diagnoses. And, and do you still go to therapy and take medication and you know continue to fight through it yeah um I don't go to therapy I I stopped going to therapy but I do have a psychiatrist I am on um medications I feel like I found finally found two antidepressants that work for me um and so yeah I I'm taking my medications every day I'm just kind of taking it as it comes. I'm going to have good days. I'm going to have bad days. Right. Um, I'm in nursing school, so that keeps me busy. I don't sit around as much, I think. I, that helps me. It doesn't help a yeah. bit. It does help me. Because um, you got to get up and, I mean, I have to. Right. I got to go. You yeah. Know? So that helps. Um, and plus, I'm actually pursuing something that I've always wanted to do and that I'm passionate about. So it helps. It helps, it helps keep me going. And my final thing is, what will you tell a teenager or a young adult about depression, um, getting help, talking, suicidal thoughts? What advice would you give? Number one, I, I think it gets better. It's, I think it's very hard in the moment to think that, but it does, it can't, it does get better. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. I think there are so many resources out there now, like the, um, you can go to therapy online, what is like better help, um, the hotlines, there's so many like forums and, and chat rooms, just don't be, you're not alone. There are people who are dealing with the same things that you are. I understand that everybody has the privilege of having like supportive family right I um, mean things like that but if you do I would talk to them they can get you the help that you need but I think my main thing is it gets better and you're not alone um and you're loved but I think that's my main thing well thank you for being my first interview well, you're welcome <laughs> I was the first guest I didn't, I'm nervous my first guest, my first baby, you're the first everything. Um, but thank you for sharing your story. 
Um, I, I know that it's difficult, you know, even sharing with me. Um, so sharing with everybody is difficult, but thank you for, for coming on and, and just sharing your experience and, and giving hope to other people and helping your mommy. Welcome. This was but exciting. It, it is. It's, it's, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you did it. Um, I, think that this, I think that this is going to help a lot of people. Um, and, and because we are in a back to school season and, and different things, I think that this will help a lot of people. I think so. I think so. I think you're changing lives. I think you're doing great things. Oh, thank you, baby. Awesome. Well, thank you for having, for coming on. Um, this has been Behind the Mask with me, the Diva with Depression. Please, please, please like and share. Uh, we are, the world is crazy right now and, and we're going through different struggles. So you don't know if information can, you know, change one life. So like, share, listen, stay healthy, stay peaceful, and continue, continue to keep fighting. Bye. Thank you, Tony. Welcome. Thank you.